Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm about to show you guys how to make Luffy's battle axe. Honestly, pretty simple and stuff. If you guys are enjoying One Piece content, most definitely uh, let me know in the comments if you want more One Piece con content. Uh, I could try to do Luffy's Gatling gun, then maybe start getting into other One Piece characters' abilities. It's not gonna hold you. I'm only 200 episodes into One Piece, so I don't know that much characters, but I could do, you know, maybe do some stuff like, like do some stuff with Zoro, like Zoro attacks type thing. But anyway. Thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing on my videos and stuff and let's get straight into it first things first you're gonna need a remote event right so inside of replicated storage click the plus icon if you don't see the remote event icon you click you can just type it then click remote event then name that remote event luffy event and make sure that's in replicated storage inside of server script service you're gonna have your animation right so simply you would just get your animation ID and you would insert it right here, which is animation ID and the rest like this part will autofill and stuff. All you got to do is just put your animation ID and then of course name it and name it battle axe because it's the name of the attack. I'm going to insert this animation into the server script when we get into the actual server side scripting. So you could just leave that there for now. Then inside of server storage, we have our hitbox. The hitbox, you know, uh, the attack is Luffy, you know, he his foot goes high up in the air then slams back down on the ground so this is the hitbox for like the amount of area it'll cover and stuff so yeah player would be in the middle so if, so if there's any other players within this box touching this box they're going to be damaged so yeah uh, a couple properties that you need to make sure you do with the hitbox keep in mind it's just a regular part but we but we of course manipulated the properties first make sure it's transparent so set transparency equal to one uh Turn can't collide off, but make sure can't touches on. Make sure it is not anchored and make sure it is massless so that it doesn't glitch when we're using weld constraints, right? Then inside of the hitbox, you're gonna want to insert a weld constraint. And then you're gonna wanna make part zero the hitbox and then leave part one blank. We're going to set part one to the, to the character's humanoid root part via the server script. So once you're done setting up your hitbox, you can leave that inside of server storage. I have the rig here simply just so I can test the attack. You could just click rig builder, then insert your desired rig. And yeah. And then of course in sound service, I have my Luffy stretch sound. You guys can hear it. You guys can go to the toolbox, then go to audio and just type Luffy and you will find the sound effect. It is that simple stuff. The animations I use in this video are R15 only and just in general the script only works for R15. So this isn't one of those things where like you could you could use the script for R6 and R15. You just have to change the animations. No, this the way I scripted it, it only will work for R15. So yeah. But anyway, let's get into the actual scripting because honestly guys it's not that much. So it's not gonna take us that long. So we can head on over to Stutter Player and insert a local script into Stutter Player scripts right and then we can name this script we can name this script luffy script in parentheses put local right then we can delete print hello world we got to make two variables first things first we're going to get the user input service so local uis equal to game get service user input service then we're going to get the luffy remote event so local luffy event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child luffy event then I'm going to create the function for when a player, you know, um, tries to use the attack. So UIS that input began connect function in parentheses put input comma process. Remember process process is how we check to make sure that the player is pressing the key and not just typing in chat. So enter if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and process is equal to false, which means the player is not typing in chat. Enter, we're gonna say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot for me I went with F. You guys can choose whatever key bind you want. Then enter and you're gonna say Luffy event fire server in quotation marks, you're gonna say battle axe. So we know the event type. And just like that, guys, we're done with all the client side scripting. Like I said, it really wasn't that much. Then I can head on over to server script service and insert a server script. You guys can put your animation inside of script. If you don't know how to do the animation, you would just you would click the plus icon, click, click animation, make sure you name it, put your animation ID, and then put it inside the script. Then, of course, we're going to name this Luffy script. In parentheses, we're going to put server. Then we're going to delete print hello world. We're going to make a couple variables. First things first, we're going to get the tween service. So TS is equal to game, get service, tween service. Then we're going to get the sound service. So local SS is equal to game, get service, sound service. Then I'm going to get the Luffy remote event. So local Luffy event is equal to game, the replicated storage, wait for child, Luffy event. Then I'm going to get the hitbox from server storage, so local hitbox. 
is equal to game that server storage wait for child hitbox. And lastly, I'm going to put a space in between. I'm going to create a table for players that are able to attack other players. So local can attack is equal to special brackets. That's how we create a table. Then I'm going to get into the function. So Luffy event dot on server event connect function in parentheses put player or PLR short for player and then event type. I'm just gonna make sure just double okay. Just need to double check that my mic is still recording, guys. <laughs> A few times where I accidentally hit the mute the mute button while pressing backspace or delete, but anyway. So press enter and then I'm gonna say if event type, oh sorry, first things first, I'm gonna get the player's character. So I'm gonna say local character is equal to player dot character. I'm gonna say if event type is equal to quotation marks battle axe enter. Then I'm gonna set the animation track local at is equal to character dot humanoid load animation. And then I'm going to say script regular brackets event type. This searches the scripts, all the scripts children. To see if it matches if any of the instances matches uh the name of the event type so since the name of the event is battle act it's going to look for the animation or just generally anything parents to the script by the name of battle acts which is right here which is why naming naming is very important right then you're going to say at play 0 0.7 seconds right um the animation by default it kind of is like it's a little fast, so I just want to slow it down a little bit. Or no, wait. Actually, no. I think it's too slow. But anyway, besides the point, besides the point, I make it play for zero point seven seconds. But this is optional, though. You guys, you just have to change the timing if you do choose to do it differently. But this is just my opinion. It just makes it look better when I play for zero point seven seconds. Then I'm gonna say task dot wait zero point three seconds. And then I'm gonna say table dot insert can attack player dot name. The player is not able to attack other players. And then I'm going to make their left leg transparent all the left leg part transparent so character dot upper oh sorry not upper, dot left upper leg dot transparency is equal to one then character dot left lower leg dot transparency is equal to one and character dot left foot dot transparency is equal to one Right, then we're going to create a fake left leg. So local fake left leg is equal to instance dot new part. And you're going to parent this part to be character. And then we're going to set its properties. We're going to say fake left leg dot anchored is equal to false. Fake left, fake left leg dot can collide is equal to false. Fake left leg dot material is equal to enum dot material dot smooth plastic. You know, the material of, of Players body parts. Then you say fake left leg dot bird color is equal to character dot left upper leg dot brick color color. Then I'm gonna say fake left leg that name is equal to fake left leg, same as we named the variable. And lastly, I'm going to say fake left leg dot mass list is equal to true so that it doesn't glitch since we're gonna be using worlds. Then I'm going to create the weld. So I'm going to say local left weld is equal to instance dot new weld. I'm not going to parent it just yet. I'm going to say left weld dot name is equal to left weld. Then I'm going to say left weld dot part zero is equal to character dot left upper leg. Right. Then I'm going to say left weld dot part one is equal to fake left leg then i'm going to say left weld dot c zero you know the c frame is equal to c frame dot new zero comma negative five comma negative zero point eight right and lastly i'm going to say i'm going to parent it so i'm going to say left weld dot parent is equal to fake left leg right and then just like that, we are done with the wells. We can now get into the tweening and then the hitbox, you know, the damaging and sound effects, of course. And then we will be done. So let's go ahead, go ahead and set up two tweens. We're going to say local left tween is equal to TS create. We're going to say fake left leg for the instance. Then tween info dot new put 3.5 seconds. Then enum dot easing style. Of course, we're going to go with elastic to get that, give it that rubber rubber band like effect. Then we're going to say enum dot easing style. Oh, no, sorry, not using style, using direction dot out. And then, of course, on the outside, 
we're gonna put a comma and then we're going to create a table for our properties and then we're going to say size is equal to fake left leg dot size plus vector three dot new zero comma 45 comma zero and then the great news guys we can copy and paste so just control c we're going to copy that enter paste this down here name this left weld queen you're going to change a couple things instead of fake left leg you're going to name this left weld then you're going to go over here and instead of size we are changing the c frame so c zero and then you're going to say left weld dot c zero and then you're going to leave the vector theta new you're going to leave that the same but we're going to change the numbers then you're going to change this to negative 20. and then just like that of course we're going to play the tweens we're going to say left tween play left well tween play and then I'm going to play the sound effects so ss luffy stretch one play i'm gonna scroll down a little bit then i'm going to i'm going to create the hitbox and make it so that we can damage other players so local hitbox clone is equal to hitbox clone and then i'm going to say hitbox clone dot c frame is equal to character that humanoid root part dot c frame times c frame dot angles right and then i'm going to use radians i'm going to say math dot rad and then i'm going to put 1.6 then comma math dot red zero comma math dot red zero right so you set the c frame we're going to we're going to parent it so say parent is equal to workspace and lastly i am going to set the well constraint so well constraint part one is equal to character that humanoid root part as i mentioned in the beginning of the video then i'm going to set up the damage i'm going to say hitbox clone dot touched connect function in parentheses put hit and say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid and table dot find can attack player dot name if we find their name if we find the name of the table we're going to remove the name so table dot remove can attack comma table dot find can attack comma player dot name then i'm going to say hit dot parent dot humanoid take damage 10. You guys, you guys can set the damage value to whatever you want then we, we're going to go on the outside of the function put a space in between we're going to say task dot wait you know for one second then i'm going to destroy the fake left leg as well as the hitbox destroy both of those and then i'm going to search to make sure that the player's name still isn't in the table so to, if table dot find can attack player.name enter we can copy and paste this so control c control v go on the outside of the if statement and then i'm going to make it so that the player's real left leg will become transparent back again so character dot left per leg dot transparency is equal to one i'm sorry not one is equal to zero then character dot left lower leg I would be faster honestly to just copy and paste from up there and then just change the ones to zeros but anyway in character dot left foot oh sorry that transparency is equal to zero just like that we are done as always if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member by pressing the join button next to the subscribe button or become a discord subscriber by joining my discord server and clicking subscriptions and stuff you guys get access to everything and yeah links to join my roblox scoop and discord can be found in the description you should for sure join the discord server you come there to chill i post sneak peeks and clips of the stuff i'm working on i ask for you guys opinions um you guys are, you guys can submit video ideas as well as so i think oh yeah you can get help with scripts and stuff and for sure join the robot group too but anyway let's get into the attack so if i press the f key oh i, I knew it I knew, I knew it i knew i did something wrong i was like because i know i was just typing fast so let me just fix that and stuff assuming you guys put it right you guys shouldn't have any issues but yeah Okay, let's see if there's any issues now. Yeah, okay. That is not supposed to be like that. Like the attack worked, but the is not supposed to is not supposed to be that yeah. Yeah, it's not supposed to be that. I must have did something wrong here. Zero forty five, zero negative plus hmm. I did something wrong. Because it's not supposed to, yeah, yeah, the leg is not supposed to be that big. Or right, let me see, maybe it's not with the tween, maybe it's not what with what I'm like tweening, maybe it's more so. 
What did I make the size? Fake left leg. Oh, I forgot to set the size. That's the problem. Oh, my fault. So fake left, left leg dot size is equal to character dot left upper leg. Okay, so make sure you guys do this. Is equal to fake is equal to left upper leg dot size. That's what I forgot to do. I forgot to set the the starting size or the default size. Okay, now let's see this. There we go. Now it's right. As you guys can see, it's damaging the play even if I don't hit it because it's within the hitbox. Now if I obviously go like over here, yeah, it won't it won't do any damage. But as you guys can see, stretches up, goes down, just like that, and then like returns back to normal. And yeah, so that's how you make Luffy's battle axe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Links to join my Roblox group and Discord server Discord server can be found in the description. If you guys want more One Piece videos, let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video.